Right, so let, let's have a look at some lightweight cryptography. So in in many applications, what we have is asymmetric encryption. So with asymmetric encryption, we have two keys. We have a public key and a private key. And the place that it's normally used is for Bob to prove his identity. So Bob will sign something with his private key and then send that to Alice. And then Alice will take Bob's public key and decrypt it and see if she can find uh, a message which identifies Bob. Unfortunately, the methods that we use aren't really uh, fit for purpose when it comes to uh, low-powered devices such as RFID tags. So the method we're going to look at is an elliptic curve based method. So let's see how elliptic curve actually works. An elliptic curve has this type of form here. Y squared is equal to X cubed plus X plus B. And this is an example here of Y squared is equal to X cubed minus 3X plus 5. The one thing you should notice is that it reflects around the X axis. The other property that it has is that uh, if we take a point and we draw a straight line, it will cut the, cut the curve at two places, which means that we can keep going up on the curve and actually still find a point uh, where we can draw a straight line. So the way elliptic curve works is that we take a point on a certain ellipse, so in this case it might be this point here, and then what we do is that we multiply it by a very large number called n in this case. So n produces uh, the gradient of a straight line. And then if we draw the straight line, then the point at which it hits the curve is t, or our public key. So we can distribute our public key, and we can also let it know what the p-value is. Uh, everyone will share that one. But it is actually extremely difficult as these are two, if t is a large number, then it's extremely difficult to know what the, the private key actually is. So that could only be done by dividing this point by that point. And because they're extremely large numbers, it's very difficult to do that and out with uh, a computational time. Okay, so that's that's how our elliptic curve methods work. So let's look at a specific example. So in this case, we have an RFID tag. And what we want to be able to do is to identify it correctly uh, with a certain manufacturer, a certain ID to the RFID reader. So the way we set up uh, the LA method, so LA method uses a, a Diffie-Hellman elliptic curve method is that each tag has a, a random number generated for it, in this case, epsilon. And then for this, for if this is epsilon, and we take a point P on the elliptic curve, then B becomes the public key, or the public value that we can distribute. And then what we do is that for the manufacturer, we use the private key of the manufacturer, and then we take the value of B, and we sign for that with the private key. So the reader over here will have the public key of the vendor, say, and will be able to verify the value of B. So it can't change. So the reader generates lambda, and then calculates, uh, takes the point P, which is shared, multiplies it by this large number lambda, and we get a value of A. A then gets sent over to the RFID tag, and now what it must do is multiply the value of A by epsilon to give the value of C. So it sends back B, which is its public key, epsilon P, C, which is uh, epsilon A, and it also sends back the signature of B. When it comes back, it then checks the signature of, of B to see if it's been signed correctly, and then calculates the uh, B times lambda. Remember, B was epsilon P to give value of D. It then
compared the value of D and C together, and if they're the same, then we've verified the, the tag. So the device can continually challenge for this with a new value of lambda. Okay, so C is equal to epsilon A, and that's equal to epsilon and then lambda P. Okay, so so that's the uh, the the gradient there is the epsilon times lambda. If we look at the value of d, then d is equal to lambda b, which is lambda, and the value of b is epsilon p. And these two values should be the same because of uh, we can multiply in any order. So we end up with epsilon lambda p should be the, the value that, that we that we end up with uh, here, and they, they should be the, the same. If, if, if we're Eve, then Eve will try to pretend to be the RFID the tag, but unfortunately she doesn't know what the value of E is, so she won't be able to generate a valid value uh, here for the correct uh, result. Uh, she doesn't even know uh, lambda there. Okay, so let's look at an example. Okay, so let's generate our private key. So in this case, this is the key that uh, would go into the into the the private key, this is the epsilon, this is lambda, there's the A value, B value that's created, and then in the end we get C and D which are the same. So we've actually proven the device. We can try lots of different values, but that's what we get. So the Python code is just fairly simple, uh, such as this, this one here. We're using this curve just now fairly efficient curve uh, for uh, for lightweight cryptography. Okay, so hopefully that's explained uh, lightweight public key or asymmetric encryption using Ellie uh, method. It's uh, elliptic light and you'll find details in this paper and also within inside this ISO IEC standard.